Special show. How's it going, everyone? We finally made it. Day two. I hope you all had an incredible time at Affiliate World. I know my team and I, we had one of the most successful shows here so far. Um, but I want to thank all of you for taking the time out of your schedules to join me today as I <clears throat> share my insights on our $35 million blueprint on how we strategically identified three verticals in which we dominated in the first six months of last year. But before we get into, uh, before I even get started about myself, I need to give a big thank you to Affiliate World for including me in their speaker lineup so I can share my insights with all of you and share some great information that I hope you can all take and utilize in the future to help grow your businesses. Um, but before we get into the nitty gritty, let me tell you about myself briefly. Um, I have about two decades worth of experience in the performance marketing and affiliate landscape. Um, throughout those years, I've been fortunate enough to successfully scale multiple businesses profitably. I can tell you it has not been an easy journey. Uh, there have been a tremendous amount of losses. Um, but this journey has definitely allowed me to um, invest in scalable uh, direct-to-consumer businesses. And the strategies that we use to invest in these businesses are the exact same strategies that we use and utilize to help grow uh, the verticals that we're going to go and jump into and go all in on. Um, some quick things on the investments that we have. Um, you know, Clean Cult, was, which is a disruptor in the um, cleaning supply business, uh, cleaning supply world, using one of the only companies using plastic free uh, bottles. Um, Casa, Zul, and Loverboy are spirits that are you know, really expanding in the whole alcohol beverage landscape. And then there's Supreme Golf, which is disrupting golfers on how they can uh, make reservation tea times. And the common theme here is that these companies are disruptors. And I'm going to share the strategies that you know, made us go into this to also identify the products and verticals that we all went in on. But as I continue to look for uh, investments to scale on, I'm, in, I'm heavily involved in two thriving businesses. Um, one of them is Spy Media, which is our uh, media buying platform in which we're spending up to upwards of 100K a day uh, across uh, social media platforms and native platforms, driving targeted audience to our uh, content sites. Um, and then we have Seco Squared, which is our leading performance marketing company uh, it's in which we're amplifying and growing our advertising businesses by delivering them targeted consumers, leveraging our email and uh, media buying platform. Um, in addition to that, we're also helping publishers and affiliates maximize their ROIs, utilizing the same strategies that we're doing for our advertisers. So what are these three verticals that we absolutely dominated? Um, the first one is torts, um, which is class action lawsuits. Um, the next one is auto insurance, and the last one is coupon savings. And so when we go about selecting and evaluating our opportunities, it's super important to first dissect um, what these verticals are all about and why they're interesting to begin with in the first place. So let's start the dissection. We have auto insurance here. So what we identified was that there are about 228 million registered vehicles in the U.S. There are about 310 million people living in the U.S. So that's more than half of America that has a registered vehicle. On top of that, there are 35 car brands that are actively sold in the U.S. And there are multiple models within each brand. Why is that important? Well, we know that if there's two, 300 million people in the U.S. and there's 228 million registered vehicles, we know that that's a huge reach at the end of the day. Um, but what is also helpful is that having 35 car brands and multiple models, that's going to allow us to be able to come up with multiple variants of our ads that we're going to be serving to, to consumers. And each insurance company has a different price based off of um, the different models that they're looking to insure. And most importantly, which you'll see there's a theme here, there's no state restrictions. So it's all 50 states. What we identify is that when we start having state restrictions, it's impossible to try to scale at the end of the day. 
as I mentioned, tort being another um, vertical that we dominated. And this is a class action lawsuit um, that attorneys are actively looking for uh, customers who have been affected by some sort of injury. Um, we had no idea what torts were, um, let alone we had no idea what Camp Lejeune was. As we started doing more investigative work and in, in, in identifying you know, what this whole campaign and vertical was, we identified that the lead value is extremely high. Why? Uh, Camp Lejeune was a military base in North Carolina um, that about a million people over a 30 year period of time were affected by contaminated water. Why is that valuable? because what we identified was that a lawyer who was, took on one of these leads and actually settled the, lead for, uh, settled the case for one of the leads that we generated, it was worth about 150K to about 450K for that claim. Um, why that's important is because that means that we can go out and, and identify and buy a more expensive cons consumer for, for them and our media buys could expand in a much different manner than on a lower priced lead like the auto insurance. And again, most importantly, there's no state restri restriction. All 50 states are available in this. The last is coupon savings. We had no idea that people really use coupons and I guess when we took a step back, I guess we all want discounts when we're going out and we're buying something online. When we started doing our research, uh, pretty much uh, almost 100% of Americans had used the coupon. There were 177 million redeemed digital coupons at the end of the day that took place, and 176 billion coupons were distributed in the US. What does that mean? Practically, every brand, every product, anything anyone was looking for was looking for some sort of deal. So that, again, opens up a huge, wide audience for us. And again, there's 50 states available, so no straight res state restrictions. So we just dissected like the overall compass of what that vertical existed of, but there's also more to it, and that's our key market characteristics that we take a look at. And the first one is market competition. When we take a look at a specific vertical or offer that we're looking in, there can be multiple competitors in there. And why is that important for us? Because there are gonna be certain gaps in which we can plug in and identify those niches on where we can expand and there's gonna be a varying cost of what your media is going to, going to cost based off of who's competing in there. Um, and so sometimes you know, having multiple companies could be great because you can pick and choose where you can find those niches. Sometimes the scalability isn't there, but sometimes there is. Um, and then if there's a monopoly dominance on a specific vertical or advertiser, that's important because that opens up huge opportunities because that company is probably dominant in one specific medium. Is it search? Is it email? Is it native? Is it social? And so based off of that, if you're a pretty savvy media buyer, you can identify you know, where, that, where that value is based off of how you can generate a relatively inexpensive lead and generate a high profit margin off of that. The next, which I think is paramount when identifying what to look for in, 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 in a vertical or offer is really truly understanding that business model. Because without understanding that business model, it's gonna tie back to another key market characteristic that I'm gonna explain. If you don't understand that business model, you're pretty much running on a hamster wheel because you're, we're always looking for the highest payout, but you know, that campaign typically caps out or, or pauses because you know, we can never get it to scale and work. And that's because we need to really understand what that business model looks like. Um, you know, is that lead going to a call center? If so, what does that KPI look like? What is the cost of you to generate that ultimate KPI? Is it a lead aggregator? So meaning you, know, you can generate leads at multiple different prices and get paid at multiple different prices as well and really identify where that, that delta is on what your, what your profitability is. The next is understanding the presence of the, of the mediums that these brands and, and, and advertisers and verticals are operating in. So like I said earlier, are they focused just on social? Are they focused just on native? Or are they across the board? Because as you start picking and choosing where you want to spend and invest all your time and money in, you need to understand what those opportunities look like.
And the next most important thing also is understanding what those conversions and payouts look like. Um, I know all, at least the buyers, at least for us as well, we're always wanting to get the highest payouts from the network or the advertiser. But to be honest with you, what we've identified through our analysis and the data that we've you know, seen on our side, sometimes the highest payout doesn't really yield the highest results. Um, at the end of the day, what we noticed is, is that sometimes when our payouts are a little bit lower, we're getting the highest conversion rate. And what's th what that allows us to do is to be able to scale on the volume. Um, and, and sometimes when we're getting the highest payouts, we're super happy, it starts working, and then the conversions just fall off a cliff. And so at the end of the day, we just need consistency um, with regards to you know, what, what we're making. So to recap, you know, key market characteristics is you know, understand your market competition, analyze the business model, understand where those verticals are, are running, um, and understand what your payouts and conversions are. So let's get into the fun stuff, um, you know, the types of media and creatives that, that worked for us. So we'll take this ad, for example. Um, as you can see, you know, we generated on, on, on one of the native platforms we worked on, um, we generated a 1.24 conversion rate off of this native ad. For us, that's pretty strong. This was our second biggest spender uh, on native. Um, and why, why did this work? Uh, typically, you know, from a, um, a copyright standpoint, it definitely helps to target if you can based off of where, where the geo is of uh, the consumer, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get into the psyche, at least on uh, for all our ads, but mainly on native, we're trying to get into the psyche of we're targeting someone in Georgia, and at the end of the day, we're also targeting someone that you know, probably doesn't have a DUI, and someone's always looking to save money at the end of the day, which goes back to our coupons savings, which I'll get into our ads. But the image here, this is an image that, at least in the States, most people are familiar with in terms of the license and the registration update. Our largest spender on, on our first native platform generated a 1.36 uh, click-through rate. And the one thing on native that has always worked for us is you're always trying to get the highest click-through rate you could possibly get on that initial click because that tends to increase your overall conversions. And typically, you can spend more money on a click if you have a pretty higher conversion rate than average. Um, again, common theme here, is we're state targeting, uh, and we do it for all, all of the ads that, that, that we're operating in, is you know, really trying to identify a specific target. And it also works for auto insurance in the sense that certain, certain auto insurance companies are looking to spend more money in specific states, um, and also certain zip codes as well. So what we've done is, on this one, um, you know, we, we're trying to you know, get people in from specific zip codes and really have them engaged. And the image here, this is a common image that no one really wants to be a part of, being stopped by the police. Um, on the second native platform, again, you know, common theme for copyright, you know, we're targeting the state, we're targeting people saving money. Um, DMV is a, is a sign that no one ever wants to see, at least in the US. It's a sign of misery, to be honest with you. Um, and so it engages people's psyche. And the last is um, you know, our largest spender on our second native platform. And again, common theme. We're targeting, you want to target where they're, where they're based and where they're located. And you know, it's images like this that we're A-B testing all the time in order to generate the highest CTR. Next is Camp Lejeune on, our, on native. Um, as I mentioned, there's a high va lead value. So as I, I was talking about before, we're getting a paid, you know, anywhere from $300 to $600 a lead for um, a, new, a new person to come in and uh, make a claim for Camp Lejeune. Um, again, by being able to get paid a fair amount of money for a specific um, vertical allows us to be able to spend a little bit more money, but having a lower than, than average CTR worked in this scenario. Um, you know, again, state targeting, not really needed on this one, mainly because this was for all 50 states, and there's no specific value of lead based off of where that person is living. It's, you know, were they involved in Camp Lejeune and were they contaminated with toxic water? Um, 
Again, we use a bright image here. Um, this is like a billboard that was at Camp Lejeune um, that people who were there would resonate with this, uh, with this particular image. Uh, in addition to that, um, you know, this was a massive bill that was passed um, through Congress. So you know, people are, are well aware of, of what's happening and they're here to make that claim. Um, this was our biggest spender on, on our first native platform um, for Camp Lejeune. Another native ad for Camp Lejeune, you know, this is uh, an image that was used where, you know, this, this brings people back to their time in basic training. Um, and so this one generated us, you know, a 0.91% conversion rate. And last for Camp Lejeune, um, our largest spender on native platform number two, um, really, you know, we're targeting the Marine, someone who was in the Marines or, or a descendant from someone who was in the Marines who was able to make a claim, listing out really like what the, what the time frame was and where you qualify for, for this. And, you know, again, it's an image that brings back memories for, for, for someone who was in active service. And that's really what you're trying to do on Native is really trying to get someone's psyche engaged into, you know, clicking that ad. Going to Meta now, um, you know, we've had you know, great success you know, uh, for a bunch of different campaigns on Meta, um, from Camp Lejeune to, um, uh, to, to the coupon savings. Uh, life, uh, auto insurance didn't work for us, but I'll go through some of the ads that we had on, on Meta. So this one was an interesting one uh, on Camp Lejeune. So, um, we had a video style ad that looked like, you know, they can click on, on this image to go view a video. Um, for us, we identified that that, you know, had a pretty strong CTR for us. Um, again, we're explaining to them exactly what the, you know, what, what's the qualification in order, you know, to, in order to, you know, make that claim and be part of, you know, the, the Camp Lejeune um, uh, lawsuit. Um, but again, what we identified is showing as if you can click on a video, this is really what has, has the engagement of, of a user on Meta. Um, here's a similar one uh, that we did as well, you know, boot camp style training. You know, it gives the message that you know, they may be seeing some sort of like remembrance from when they were back in boot camp, wanting to see what's going on here. But again, this just clicks right out to, to the landing page. This was probably one of our worst converters um, on, uh, on, on Camp Lejeune. Again, we thought we would go with a different schematic, uh, you know, just keeping it plain and simple, but this just had zero performance for us, um, and it was terrible. This was an interesting ad that we did as well. Um, it made it look like there was a, a pop-up like notification. Um, it was a different angle that we took on Camp Lejeune. Most people are used to seeing something like this on some sort of push notification or on your phone. Um, and you know, having them hit yes, you know, it's making them feel like they're, they're getting engaged with, with the ad. Um, let's go to uh, our coupon savings. As I mentioned earlier, there were 176 million coupons or 176 billion coupons distributed uh, throughout the US. Um, and that covered a tremendous amount of products and stores and brands. Um, and what we did was, you know, we were able to utilize, you know, real high name brands and, and, and store, storefronts that people are most familiar with. So this is one that we did with Amazon that gener yielded us, you know, a 33.6% uh, uh, click through rate, which is, you know, pretty cool. Um, here's something similar as well, where we're using Best Buy. It's a brand that everyone knows. It's a brand that people can resonate with. Um, online. Travel is another domain that you know, worked extremely well and here we're targeting people who had travel interests and what's better than to save money on your travel, right? Um, and then last but not least, um, Nike, one of probably most well-known brands throughout the world. Uh, so, you know, again, Nike's offering coupons every single day. The campaign that we ran was Capital One. Um, and so they were offering, you know, literally coupons across all different brands and, 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 and storefronts. Um, and then let's go to email. What worked in email? The ads in email are different than what the ads are on Facebook and Native. Um, this is uh, an official looking uh, email creative we used for our auto insurance yielded us a pretty high EPC 
uh, for us, which you know, allows our systems to be able to scale and multiply. Um, and so what we identified was that you know, the, an ad like this um, or an email creative like this really resonated with people and made it look more official um, than some of the other ads. And we did a tremendous amount of A-B testing throughout you know, the works that we do. Um, this is a Camp Lejeune one that did pretty well. Uh, in addition, and again, as you can see, the difference between you know, our native ads and our meta ads, um, you know, this one yielded us a pretty high conversion rate, 5.6%, which is you know, very high in, in email for us at least, and yielded you know, almost a $7 EPC. Um, and again, you know, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get people engaged, trying to get them to you know, click on, on what, we're, what we're sharing. Um, so with that being said, there's other big challenges that we, that we encounter when we're buying media. And the biggest one that we encountered in the very beginning, and I'm sure some of you encountered it well, is cash, right? There's always that float between laying out your, 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 ad, your ad spend to when we're getting our receivables. And so how do we deal with that? Well, there's a couple of ways. What we, re what we figured out was that we were willing to take a loss at the end of the day of a couple percent and talk with our advertisers or networks to pay us a little bit earlier. Um, and so at the end of the day, if, you know, if the cost to us was a couple percent to get paid earlier, we were taking that loss because we still had good profit margins in place. And at the end of the day, two to three percent to get paid earlier, in our opinion, it's well worth it because it's going to help continue to fund your, your overall buys. Next, at least in the U.S., your biggest ally is American Express Plum, Plum Card. Why is that? Because one, it's you know, easily to be accepted, but the most important benefit and biggest benefit, in my opinion, is that it's probably one of the only credit cards that allows you to pay your bill in 60 days. And why is that meaningful? Most of the time, we're getting paid net 30, and so to be able to have that float and be able to use a credit card to you carry that float till the time we get paid is extremely huge and it's going to help us continue to grow and expand our overall media buys. Next, where we've had great success as well is if you're able to scale, at least in the U.S., if, you're, if you have strong enough financials, you know, getting a line of credit from your bank, um, it, now it's expensive since you know, interest rates are much, much higher, but having a line of credit is extremely valuable in order to help continue to fund your buys and obviously using your own cash based off of what you, you've done. So, you know, bridging your, your receivables and scaling your buys, again, like, you know, common theme here is you negotiate your terms with your advertisers. If you're in the U.S., I don't know what it's like internationally, but, uh, you know, American Express has the plum card, line of credit, using your own money. Um, as we, you know, finish up here, you know, Again, there's multiple strategies that go in place based off of um, you know, how we're identifying what's working, what's not working. Um, and you know, the biggest thing for us is identifying you know, what those profitable products are. And it's doing research, right? You can't just go in there thinking, I'm going to go run this, I'm going to scale this up, because nine times out of 10, you're most likely going to fail. And it's, you, know, you, you put all this hard work and effort into one particular product or vertical, and it just ends up crapping out. Um, Next is you know, identifying your, your capital resources in order to be able to sustain your overall growth at the end of the day. Because you know, having that float from getting paid net 30 to having to pay your, 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 your buys on a real-time basis on a credit card can get hairy at times. And, and third is really understanding your media and, 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 the, uh, and the creative metrics on your side to, in order to create you know, six, successful campaigns um, is really you know, the, the big benefit. And in addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, really understanding your overall business model of the companies that you're working with, um, understanding what their KPIs are. Because without understanding the KPIs and understanding you know, how it's working, we're, you're running on a hamster wheel at the end of the day. And so really, truly understanding that is going to help you align yourself with the right payout and really understand and, and help align yourself with um, understanding where the, where the value is on where you're buying and identifying those pockets to be able to scale. Um, I hope this was super informative for all of you. Um, 
Sorry for uh, it being the last one, but I hope it was super informative for everyone. You can follow me.